Living with knee osteoarthritis often feels like an endless struggle where finding relief seems almost impossible. And if cortisone injections have brought you little to no lasting improvement, rest assured you are not alone. In this video, we will explore the four most common injection therapies for knee osteoarthritis. We will examine clinical trial data to identify which treatments are most effective at reducing pain and improving function. One of these options has even been shown to slow down the progression of arthritis. By weighing the pros and cons of each option, you'll gain the knowledge necessary to make informed decisions about your arthritis care. The choices you make now can significantly enhance your quality of life. Join me to find out which treatment could be the key to unlocking a more active and fulfilling life. Hey everyone, Dr. Jeff Pang here. The four most common injections currently used to treat knee osteoarthritis include corticosteroid injections, also known as cortisone shots, hyaluronic acid injections, also called gel shots or visco supplementation, stem cell therapies, including the use of bone marrow, adipose, and umbilical stem cells, as well as platelet-rich plasma or PRP injections. Let's first start with cortisone shots. For years, doctors have recommended cortisone shots as a means to alleviate pain and symptoms associated with arthritis. Corticosteroids have potent anti-inflammatory inflammatory properties which can help reduce inflammation and decrease pain. However, recent studies have called into question their effectiveness. For example, this recent systematic review and meta-analysis concludes that intra-articular corticosteroid injections offer pain relief only at the short term with benefits losing clinical relevance after only six weeks. What's worse is that other studies are shining light on potential serious side effects of cortisone injections. Corticosteroids have been found to be chondrotoxic, meaning they weaken and damage healthy cartilage. Remember, arthritis by definition is the gradual wear and tear and loss of articular cartilage. So while cortisone can provide temporary relief and alleviate pain and symptoms, they result in further cartilage loss and eventually worse arthritis. In fact, that's exactly what this clinical trial showed. They found that among patients with symptomatic knee osteoarthritis, intra-articular cortisone shots compared with saline placebo resulted in greater cartilage loss and no difference in knee pain. To make matters worse, recent studies have unveiled a concerning association between cortisone injections and rapidly destructive joint disease. This is characterized by progressive joint space narrowing, osteolysis, and collapse of the joint architecture. This study found a dose-response association between intra-articular hip cortisone injections and rapidly destructive hip disease. Higher dose injections as well as multiple injections significantly increased the risk. Other studies such as this one concludes that each cortisone injection increases the absolute risk of knee replacement surgery by 9.4% compared with those who did not receive injections. Of course, it is important to note that the associations mentioned do not establish causation. Some argue that individuals with more severe knee arthritis are more likely to receive additional cortisone shots and were destined to get worse arthritis to begin with, and this is a valid perspective. However, what sets cortisone shots apart is the lack of similar effects observed with other common treatments for knee osteoarthritis. In fact, quite the opposite has been found. Several studies indicate that both platelet-rich plasma injections as well as hyaluronic acid injections have shown a potential to decrease the risk of requiring knee replacement surgery. The contrasting outcomes between cortisone shots and alternative treatments strongly support the notion that cortisone injections may indeed be causing more long-term damage. So I think it's evident that corticosteroid injections carry significant and real side effects, and all of this highlights the need for doctors to exercise greater caution when administering them. But I also want to be very clear. I'm not saying there still isn't a use for cortisone injections. In my opinion, one or possibly two cortisone injections in a specific body part is probably safe. 
For example, I still recommend corticosteroid injections in very specific situations. Take the case where a patient is experiencing an arthritis flare-up but has an upcoming vacation planned with friends and family. In such instances, a cortisone injection can be a practical choice as it aims to provide rapid and effective pain relief, allowing them to enjoy their trip. However, once they return, I suggest moving to alternate injection treatments. These alternatives may carry a lower risk of side effects and have the potential to offer benefits over a longer term. So now let's explore some alternative treatments starting with hyaluronic acid injections. These are also known as gel shots, HA injections, or visco supplementation. So first, what exactly is hyaluronic acid? HA is a naturally occurring substance found in the synovial fluid of our joints. It plays a key role in lubricating and cushioning the joints. When injected, hyaluronic acid has anti-inflammatory properties as well as pain relieving properties. The goal of HA therapy is to try to augment and restore the normal viscosity and elasticity of the synovial fluid, which can then help improve joint mobility and reduce pain. Think of it like WD-40 for your joints. Now I wanna point out that there is a lot of controversy surrounding the effectiveness of hyaluronic acid injections. For example, in 2013, the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgery put out a clinical practice guideline that states, intraarticular hyaluronic acid injection is no longer recommended as a method of treatment for patients with symptomatic osteoarthritis of the knee. In 2019, the American College of Rheumatology put out their practice guideline that stated intraarticular hyaluronic acid injections are conditionally recommended against in patients with knee joint osteoarthritis. Both of these are in contrast to the 2015 American Medical Society for Sports Medicine consensus statement, which recommends visco supplementation injections for knee osteoarthritis in those patients above the age of 60 based on high quality evidence demonstrating benefit. So when we have multiple medical and surgical organizations with conflicting recommendations, we want to examine the key factors why. And I believe one of the biggest reasons for the variability in the effectiveness of these injections lies in the method of administration. Most orthopedists and rheumatologists perform injections using a landmark-based technique. This means they palpate for anatomical landmarks and then do their best in delivering the medication into the knee joint. Sports medicine physicians are trained in ultrasound guided injections, which has been shown to improve outcomes. To illustrate my point, here is a comparison of accuracy for common injections using ultrasound guided and landmark based techniques. Landmark based accuracies often range in the low to mid 60s. Accuracy with ultrasound guidance is almost always guaranteed. This study looked at outcomes when comparing landmark based hyaluronic acid injections to ultrasound guided injections. They found that significantly fewer patients in the ultrasound guided group went on to need knee replacement surgery when compared to the landmark-based group. This difference was even more pronounced among obese patients. And the reason for this is because landmark-based injections are much more difficult in those with excess soft tissue. The authors of the study conclude that we need to rethink visco supplementation and that patients who received ultrasound guided knee hyaluronic acid injections were significantly less likely to undergo subsequent knee arthroplasty than patients receiving landmark based hyaluronic acid injections. Lastly, when it comes to cost, hyaluronic acid injections are covered by most private insurance plans as well as by Medicare. It's important to note that while hyaluronic acid injections are covered for knee arthritis, they're often not covered for arthritis in other joints such as the hips, ankles, and shoulders. If your insurance covers hyaluronic acid, it does make sense to try it as it can be an effective way to decrease pain and improve function. Just make sure your doctor administers it under ultrasound guidance. Now I'd like to move on to the field of orthobiologics and regenerative medicine. And we'll first talk about stem cells. 
Stem cell therapies are a cutting edge treatment and offer high hopes for those suffering from osteoarthritis. However, while there has been substantial media coverage and marketing efforts surrounding stem cell therapies, they often highlight anecdotal success stories. And while personal stories can be very compelling, they can create a perception of effectiveness that may not be fully supported by clinical evidence. So let's briefly explore the three main types of stem cells used in osteoarthritis treatments. First, there's bone marrow aspirate concentrate, or BMAC for short. BMAC is obtained from bone marrow and is usually harvested from the patient's iliac crest in the pelvic bone. Next, we have adipose stromal vascular fraction, also known as SVF. SVF is derived from fat tissue and is often harvested through liposuction. Last, there are stem cells from umbilical cord, which are ethically sourced and processed for clinical use. Each stem cell treatment, whether it's BMAC, SVF, or umbilical cord derived, shares a common goal. They utilize mesenchymal stem cells and growth factors to potentially repair and regenerate damaged tissues like bone, cartilage, and connective tissue. In addition, these therapies also aim to reduce pain and inflammation through their anti-inflammatory and immunomodulatory effects. So that's all in theory, but what does the actual clinical evidence indicate? While numerous case reports and some smaller studies suggest positive outcomes with stem cell therapies, the overall evidence remains inconclusive. That's why the results from this large randomized control trial were particularly significant. The study investigated the three types of stem cells, again that's BMAC, SVF, and umbilical cord tissue. The researchers compared each of these three stem cell injections to corticosteroid injections and reported outcomes at one year. Interestingly, the results showed that there was no difference in pain scores between any of the stem cell therapies when compared to cortisone injections. In addition, no treatment groups saw any notable improvement in MRI scores. This suggests that none of the stem cell treatments helped repair or regenerate anything within an arthritic knee. Now I wanna reflect on these findings and emphasize a couple key points. First, this was a very well-conducted study with a large sample size of nearly 500 patients. This is significantly more than the 20 to 30 patients in other clinical trials and therefore lends greater reliability to its findings. Second, the study questions the effectiveness of stem cell treatments compared to corticosteroid injections for knee osteoarthritis. This raises an important question. Is it worth paying thousands of dollars for a treatment that is not outright superior to less expensive alternatives? Some critics would argue that a one-year study may not be sufficient to evaluate the long-term benefits or structural improvements that stem cell treatments could provide. However, it's important to note that individuals considering stem cell therapy often seek immediate results and may be reluctant to invest a significant amount of money in a treatment that requires several years to potentially show benefits. For all these reasons, I currently do not recommend stem cell therapies for the treatment of knee osteoarthritis. This decision is based on the mixed results from recent clinical trials, many of which show little to no benefit from these treatments. Furthermore, the high cost of stem cell procedures presents a substantial financial risk, especially considering the uncertainty of their effectiveness. Okay, so what's a better alternative to cortisone, hyaluronic acid, and stem cells? I recommend considering platelet-rich plasma injections. PRP has been proven highly effective in treating knee osteoarthritis and is considerably more affordable than stem cell treatments. Platelet-rich plasma injections, also known as PRP, are a cutting-edge treatment that utilizes the healing properties of your own cells. The procedure involves a simple blood draw and then separating the blood into various components using a centrifuge. We then take the layer that has all the platelets and growth factors and then inject that into an injured area. PRP treatments have been shown to be incredibly effective in treating a variety of conditions including tendons, muscles, and joints. One of the best studied indications for PRP injections is knee osteoarthritis, and the body of evidence supporting its use continues to grow. A recent study analyzed 35 randomized control trials with a total of over 3,100 participants with knee osteoarthritis. 
This comprehensive study evaluated the effectiveness of various treatments including corticosteroid injections, platelet-rich plasma injections, hyaluronic acid, and placebo. The results showed that PRP injections were the most successful treatments in improving function and reducing pain after 3, 6, and 12 months of follow-up. Even better, there were no differences in treatment-related side effects or adverse events in any group when compared to placebo. So why are your platelets so effective at reducing pain and improving symptoms? Well, our platelets are responsible for tissue healing, tissue remodeling, tissue proliferation, and most importantly, in controlling pain and inflammation. And so what we're doing with a PRP injection is using your own body's capacity to control pain and to control inflammation, taking it out, concentrating it, and then injecting it under ultrasound guidance back into an area that's been irritated or injured. And it turns out that the cellular mechanisms activated by PRP injections are way more effective than any other medication we can inject into your knee for treatment. But it gets even better because PRP does more than just improve symptoms. One of the most compelling reasons to pursue PRP is that it may also slow down the progression of arthritis. This was demonstrated in a randomized control trial involving 610 patients, which compared the effects of PRP injections to saline placebo injections in treating symptomatic knee osteoarthritis. The study performed MRI scans at baseline and then again at five years post-treatment. And the results showed that PRP injections led to an almost 50% reduction in the progression of arthritis when compared to saline placebo. So how is this even possible? Previously, the only treatments that have been shown to slow the progression of arthritis were weight loss, diet, and exercise. That's it. So how could PRP help slow down the progression of arthritis? Well, remember, osteoarthritis is a chronic progressive inflammatory disease that causes breakdown of cartilage. Low-grade inflammation damages healthy cartilage, which worsens arthritis. And what does PRP do? PRP introduces a huge number of platelets and growth factors that can change the inflammatory environment inside a joint with arthritis. The researchers from the study analyzed the synovial fluid in the knees of patients who got PRP and those who got placebo. The placebo group had no changes to the level of inflammation in their knees. However, the PRP group had significant decrease in inflammatory markers in their knees at six months post-injection. This drop in inflammation helps to keep healthy cartilage intact and slows the progression of arthritis. All of this compelling evidence from clinical trials is further reinforced by leading medical organizations. Both the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons and the American Medical Society for Sports Medicine have acknowledged the effectiveness of PRP. They've released summaries and consensus statements highlighting PRP's significant benefits in reducing pain and enhancing joint function in knee osteoarthritis. Recently, a European organization even suggested that PRP injections may be considered as a first-line treatment for those suffering from knee arthritis. Now, it's worth quickly noting that PRP is not the same as stem cell therapy. Many people assume that stem cell therapies must be better and more effective than platelet-rich plasma. Remember, clinical trials looking at the use of stem cell therapies have not been shown that they are better than even cortisone. This is just not true of platelet-rich plasma. Studies continue to show that PRP injections are incredibly beneficial for the treatment of symptomatic knee osteoarthritis. So with everything I've presented so far, it's clear that PRP can revolutionize how we approach arthritis. But there's something else that you need to know. The quality and efficacy of PRP injections can vary significantly, and not all doctors have the same expertise when performing these injections. This leads us to a vital topic I'll explore in the next video, where we'll discuss what makes a PRP treatment successful and the key factors to consider for optimal outcomes.